Speaking of things that are not unreasonable, uh, PCSX is having a update. It's had an update. It's in the process of getting updated. The PS2 emulator PCSX uh, gets a friendly, a user-friendly UI at last. Personally, I've never really been like that against the way PCSX already looked. I'll see if I can bring it up. Actually, PCSX two. Um, I'm still. I guess I'm still using the older version, or the old. The uh, the UI isn't available on the Linux side yet. But I'll take a picture of this. Uh, we will. Uh, save this. Yes, we'll save this, put it there, and then if I go over to this bit and I drag it into my browser, then we should be able to see it. Here we go. So this is how my interface looks right now, and like you load everything in through these menus here, and it, it does the job. But with the new update, with the new Qt version, it's going to have like an actual UI. Now this art obviously isn't being loaded by the, uh, or isn't being created by PCSX2 itself. This is being loaded by the file that you decide you actually want to have there. So you can get that art from places like the cover project, which I didn't actually know about. But I guess this is a place that has a bunch of game, it does, yeah, a bunch of game covers for random ass games. That's cool. Hmm. Wait, what the hell's here for Linux? What? Why are there just these random ass covers here? What? Oh, <laughs> is the is the cover art for the um for the Ubuntu seven point uh seven point oh four box? That's <laughs> I gotta love that actually. But yeah, if you want to get some art here, you can um do it there. That's cool. I. <sighs> I, I don't think it's a bad idea to start focusing on things like this with the state that, um, you know, PS2 emulation is in. If we were talking about PS3 emulation, where PS3 emulation is still, you know, a little bit sketch, it's pretty slow, and there's a lot of optimization that needs to be done. I would say then, yeah, you're probably wasting your time actually work on the things that need to be worked on. Same with PS4, same with Xbox 360, you know, all that fun stuff. But PS2 and earlier is basically complete. Like, sure, there's a couple of things here and there which don't work properly in PS2 emulation. But it's not unfair to say that it's like... 95 to 98% accuracy, which, not perfect, but this is the point in time where it kind of does make sense to start, you know, start actually making things be better and better. Apparently this also looks like a, a UI uh, from Duck Station, which I've never heard of. So this is a PS1 emulator, I guess. That's neat. Mm. I don't actually uh, have any PS1 games that I would, like, like to emulate anyway, so I haven't really looked into the PS1 space, but that is cool. Yeah, here we go. Uh, PCSX2 is the best way to play PS2 games. Proudly declaring sports over 98% of the original PS2 library. I don't know if they've actually tested that, considering how big the PS2 library is. Um... That seems kind of unlikely, but hey, if you've tested 98, <laughs> if you've tested that many games, like, yeah, go right ahead and uh, go, and, go and claim it. But yeah, this is cool. I, I think it's totally fine to make UI look prettier if if you're at that state. Uh, here we go. It is, oh, it's only on, wait, it's a QT interface, but it's only on the Windows 10 and Windows 11. Okay, sure. It's QT. There's literally a desktop environment built entirely around QT. Why Why not on Linux just yet? Uh, long overdue, but I'll stick to launch bo a launch box for my front end. I'm guessing that's like a, a plugin or a client or something like that. Launch box. Front end... Em wait, what is this? Wait. What, wait, what did that just say? Front end for emulation, DOS box, and other things. Uh... Let, show me, show me pictures. Uh, about. 
Screenshots. There we go. Thank you. That does look pretty neat. Yeah. That looks actually really, really cool. Obviously, this isn't just for um, PS2. This is showing N64 and some other stuff in here. But I think that's... I think that's really cool looking. I think it's a little bit, like, excessive with how it looks. Like, I totally get, you know, wanting to have this... It's a mix between, like, a modern minimalist style, but then also, like, 90s retro arcade style. It's a very strange style they're going for. I personally prefer what's being done with PCSX2, but if you like that as well, hey, that's that's also really cool. Uh, here we go. What does this person say? So when we move from preservation of gaming history by making games work well with current hardware to uh, with current hardware, go have a pretty UI. Who cares how it plays? This person doesn't know the state of PCSX2. Uh, the UI was fine, but okay. We're well past the point where it's okay to keep pretending user friendly means you shouldn't have to put the slightest effort to just read. I it was already impossible not to understand how to use it. I don't know if this person's used. PCSX2 before, but it's, like, really easy to get confused with how it functions. Like, basic stuff, just, like, load, like knowing how to load in the, uh, the PS2 BIOS files. Or, like, right now I'm seeing a couple of menus. We have the system menu, we have the CDVD menu, uh, config, debug, capture, and then help. Some of those ones make sense, but what the hell is CDVD? Why is there a system? Why is the system section not include our ISO selector? What is what is an ISO? Why do I care what an ISO is? Shouldn't I like? Why can't I just care about my games? It, like obfuscating that stuff from the users who don't care about it is certainly a an improvement to the UI. Whether it's like regardless whether it's something that you personally like yourself, I was fine with it before. But I'm also fine with it being improved to actually, like, look better for the people who actually want it to look better.